Hi, thanks for joining us for today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Today's message is a fun one. It focuses on one of our core values. It's contagious celebration. The scriptures to be studied are found in John 15. Life notes are available now to be downloaded from calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now let's hear from Pastor Chad Garrison. I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to the Gospel of John chapter 15. Gospel of John chapter 15 is our text today. And if you are in one of our campuses uh, and you don't have a Bible, then uh, look around you and the seats around you. There are Bibles. Grab one of those. Turn to page 1071. 1071, and you'll be able to find John chapter 15. You'll be able to follow along with us. And as always, if you're at any of our campuses, then uh, by all means, take one of those with you if you need a Bible. If you're wanting to read God's Word and you don't have a Bible, take one. It's our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word, read God's Word. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then please message the service host uh, and uh, they'll help you out or email us at calvaryaz.com. We'll be glad to help you and get you a Bible one way or another because we know if you read and apply God's Word, uh, God will change your life. Hey, before I dive into the message and we look at John 15, I just got to tell you, I'm excited. Uh, A lot of you know that we're in a campaign called Limitless. We kicked it off last February and talked about the changes that needed to happen uh, in our facilities, and that included... uh, you know, paying off the Parker campus, and Parker campus is completely paid off now, and, and it's beautiful if you haven't seen it. Uh, and uh, I can hear Parker cheering right now. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we're building a mezzanine in our Sweetwater campus uh, next summer. So if uh, you're on our Sweetwater campus, then uh, look around, because uh, we're going to have a balcony here uh, by the end of next summer, next year. So, uh, so that's part of it. And we're in the midst of raising money for that. And, uh, it, you know, we have a, once a month, we update our figures on Limitless in your bulletin. And you can see that we're over $900,000 given since last February. So uh, that's about $153,000 a month that has come in. And so I want to praise God for the faithfulness of God's people and let you know that we are on track uh, to be able to pay cash for the mezzanine as well. And we are saving up money for uh, a children's building with uh, offices in it and things like that, office complex for our staff as well as the, in the future. So that's what's going on. I just wanted to remind you, in case you made commitments to Limitless, that you, you know it's going on and we're celebrating the faithfulness of God's people in that uh, and, and moving ahead with all of our plans. And you will see those beginning to come to uh, uh, preparations here at Sweetwater in a little bit. Uh, by the way, in case you missed it also, we have a North Campus that is also undergoing renovation right now. That's not part of the Limitless campaign, but it is getting uh, a makeover as well, and that's exciting. They'll be launching officially at the 1st of 2025 as well. So God is doing some amazing things, and uh, he's using his people to do that. So I praise God for that. And, and while I'm on the, the, the praises, I just confess to you guys that I am a joy junkie. I always have been. Uh, and by the way, I'm unrepentant about that. Uh, I always have been. Uh, as a child, I got in trouble for laughing at inappropriate times. Anybody with me? Okay, I see those hands. I, I like that. Uh, I got in trouble for turning work into play. Uh, everything can become a game if you let me. Uh, and uh, the, the problem with that is, and I realize now, I was just ahead of my time, right? <laughs> Because now it's all about the workplace, being a, a happy place and a fun place, not just some place to show up. So I was just ahead of my time. And, and then um, I loved comedy, uh, and I confess, whether it was appropriate or not, uh, as a teenager, I had to sneak to listen to Cheech and Chong. Any Cheech and Chong fans? Go ahead. <laughs> confess. Uh, we're in church. It's good. Uh, I had to sneak to watch Monty Python and uh, the original Saturday Night Live. You guys, uh, the, the good old days? Okay. So, uh, you know, and that was before we had remote control, so you had to sit close to the TV so you could change the channels if your parents came in the room. Uh, (laughs) See, and I still love humor. Uh, Today, actually, though, there are are actually good Christian comedians. uh, And uh, and then there's this wonderful thing, if you haven't heard of it, called dry bar comedy. Anybody a fan of dry bar? Okay, a few of you. And uh, it's comedy. Uh, You can stream it, you can watch it, and they don't cuss. So uh, it's clean comedy. And so I'm just a joy junkie, but I grew up among joy-challenged people. 
both in my family of origin and in the churches I was a part of, I mean, they believed in joy. They believed in having fun. They just didn't know how to do it. Uh, in fact, uh, I never really thought I could be a preacher because I'm sarcastic and a touch irreverent. At least that's what I've been told. Uh, but thankfully, God had other plans. And, and uh, you know, one good thing the Joy Challenge people did was teach me the gospel and encourage me to read the Bible. And, and it's amazing what you find in the Bible. And, and today, I just want to share one verse, John 15, 11, and I want you to listen to Jesus because he says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and your joy may be full. Uh, okay, just a couple of observations. First of all, Jesus has joy. That's part of his character. You know that if you know the fruit of the Spirit because that's listed there, and that's really the character of Christ. But Jesus not only has joy, but he wants us to have joy. These things I've told you so that my joy may be in you. But not just a little bit of joy. By the way, a lot of the churches I was in growing up, they wanted you to have a little bit of fun, but don't, let's not get it out of hand because, you know, too much joy and, and people lose control. They give in to those crazy impulses. Um, no, but Jesus said, oh, I want your joy to be full. He wants your joy tank to be full. All right, look at the person next to you and ask them, is your joy tank full? Okay, some of, some of you are answering. Some of you burst into tears. Uh, we'll talk about that later, later on. Hey, the reason we're talking about this is as we continue our About Us series uh, you know, we talked about our mission, leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. We've talked about core values, relatable truth, transparent living. And, and today we're talking about contagious celebration. Contagious celebration. And we believe that following Jesus results in a joy-filled life which draws people to Jesus. Okay, let me just say it again. Contagious celebration is one of our core values. And we believe that following Jesus results in a joy-filled life that draws people to Jesus. Okay, so if you've decided to follow Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then Jesus wants you to be a person of joy and he's committed to teaching you joy and he wants to fill your life with joy. And if you let him do that, he will use your life then to draw your unchurched friends, your unchurched family to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Okay, that's, that's what we believe about this core value. And, and I want you to understand that contagious celebration fuels the mission of Calvary. Contagious celebration fuels the mission. I mean, you guys already know the mission. I've already said it twice in the service at least. Uh, Calvary exists to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Okay? That's why we do what we do. And, and here's the thing. We want you to invite your friends and your family that don't go to church to come to church with you. In fact, I would say that the mission of Calvary is really dependent upon you. It's dependent upon you inviting your unchurched friends and family to church. And when you invite them, we're gonna communicate the love of God and the truth of the gospel in a joyful way. Okay, in a joyful way. That's what we're going to do. That's, that's kind of the, the, the way that contagious celebration works. We want you guys to live a life that's full of joy so that when you invite your friends and family to come to church with you, they want to come to church with you, and then we're going to share the gospel, and we're going to see lives change, and we're going to celebrate. Now, should be fun. Okay? Coming to church should be fun. Now, it's not what I was told growing up, but anyway. <laughs> church should be fun. It, this, this should not be a place where we don't enjoy being together. We're celebrating Jesus, and we're celebrating life change. I mean, we want church to be a Jesus party because it's easier to invite your friends to a party or a celebration than to a lecture or a study or a funeral, right? 
How many of you have ever been to a church that felt like you're going to a funeral? Yeah. And, and you're just, I don't know about you guys, inside I'm screaming because I'm like going, hey, do you guys know the good news here? Uh, so church should be fun. That's one thought. Second thought with this, and, and if, by the way, if you take this personal, you probably should, okay? If you're grumpy, angry, or bitter, no one will want to go to your party. Okay, if you're angry, grumpy, or bitter, the only people who are going to go to your party are angry, grumpy, bitter people. Because they, they, no one else is going to go to your party. And so we want you to live with joy. Don't you guys want to live with joy? Yeah. Okay, well then, you know, that's what Jesus wants, that's what we want. But the truth is, I've been around a lot of grumpy and bitter Christians who wondered why their church wasn't growing. You know, and the church down the street was growing, and then those angry, grumpy, bitter Christians just said, well, they're compromising the gospel. That's what they're doing. That's why they're growing. And I'm like, I don't think so. I think it's just the joy thing, right? You know, because who wants to hang out with grumpy, angry, bitter people? Uh, so, uh, so to be effective in our mission, we believe that Calvary should be a joyful place led by joyful people because the joy of Jesus is in them. Okay, did you get that? To be effective in our mission, we believe that Calvary should be a joyful place led by joyful people because the joy of Jesus is in them. You know, he, he, he wants us to have his joy and he wants it to be full, overflowing. I love that. So contagious celebration fuels the mission and contagious celebration is because of the gospel. It is because of the gospel. See, we can live joyful lives and be a church of celebration because of God's redemption in our lives. See, um, the truth is this. And by the way, this is the story of scripture if you wanna just summarize it. First of all, God created a perfect sinless world. You can read about it in Genesis chapters one and two. And then we rebelled and sin came into the world wrecking everything and bringing death. You can read about it in Genesis 3, or Paul talks about it in Romans 5 when he says, for just as through one man, Adam, sin came into the world, and through sin, death, therefore all died because all sinned. Yeah, see, that's the effects of sin in this world. And then because of our sin, because of our sin, all sin, all die, okay, we earned hell. I mean, we deserve eternal punishment. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I, and I always love it when people go, well, I don't, think, I don't think a loving God would send anyone to hell. I go, yeah, he didn't have to. Because we bought the ticket, right? We bought the ticket. We said, nope, I want to go. Uh, the wages is what we've earned, the right to go to hell. That's what we chose. And yet God sent Jesus into the world to atone for our sins so that we could be saved. Okay, this is the gospel. 1 John 4, 10, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Are you like the words of Jesus? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. See, that's the good news of the gospel. God sent Jesus into the world to atone for our sins so that we could be saved and Everyone who confesses Jesus as Lord will be saved. Romans 10, if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So we have received the gift of eternal life. Is that a cause to rejoice? Yeah, yeah well, you guys don't seem too happy. Um, <laughs> we have been forgiven and adopted by God. Is that cause to rejoice? Yeah. yeah. See, heaven is promised to us and guaranteed to us by the Holy Spirit in our lives. Is that cause to rejoice? Yes. Yeah, okay, you guys are trying to get it. Now, it's really cause to rejoice. We get a new body and there is no more suffering, sorrow, dying, pain, politics, pride, poverty, you name it, all that stuff is gone. Is that cause to rejoice? Yes. Yeah, all the old people cheer on that one. I get a new body. I don't like the one I have and it hurts all the time. 
So we can have joy because we deserve hell, but we receive heaven all because of the gift of Jesus. See, that's, that's why joy is because of the gospel. So we can rejoice. Now the question is, can you rejoice? Are you rejoicing? Are you letting joy fill your life? Now, please understand, we have joy while our world is dying to be happy. We have joy and our world around us is dying to be happy. I mean, look, as Americans, it's our right to pursue happiness, right? And it kills us. The world, and a lot of times we go along with the world, but the world engages in self-destructive behaviors and calls it partying. The world engages in expensive experiences. Have you guys seen how much it costs to go to Disneyland these days? Or cruises, or you know, vacations to exotic places so you can take pictures so people think you're having a good time. Or the world pursues the perfect person to be in relationship with, often engaging in serial relationships and always you know, suffering the heartbreak of ending that relationship because they're trying to find a person who will make them happy. By the way, God doesn't command us to be happy. Not once in Scripture does he command us to be happy. What he does say is rejoice always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it, rejoice. You see, we as followers of Jesus really, really, really need to understand that happiness is based on circumstances, but joy is built on truth. Happiness is based on circumstances, but joy is built on truth. Look, in your life, there will be times of happiness and there'll be times of sorrow and there'll be times of frustration and anger and apathy and fear and excitement based on your situation. But joy can be a constant companion in all those situations, right? You walk out in the morning, you got a busy day ahead of you and there's a flat tire on the car. You feel frustrated, right? Because you did not put margin in your day for a flat tire. Does anyone plan their day with margin for a flat tire? No, I don't, I don't think, yeah. <laughs> one, okay. A mechanic, of course. See, none of us have time for that. We just get frustrated. A thief breaks in your house and steals your stuff and, and you feel angry, maybe a, a little bit afraid or maybe a little bit disappointed because you weren't there to shoot him. Um, I don't know. You know, there are those moments uh, of happiness, like graduation, or you get a promotion, or you win a contest, and you're like, I'm happy, this feels so good. And then there's moments where you lose a loved one, and it's sorrow and grief. In every single circumstance, we can still rejoice because joy is built on truth, not our present momentary situation. Okay? Joy is built on truth. If we want to experience joy always, we must tell ourselves the truth every day, sometimes more than once. And here's the truth that you need to tell yourself, that we need to tell ourselves. Okay? Four statements. They're not in your notes. You're going to have to write them down or go back and listen to the sermon online. So, number one, God loves us, which means God loves you. And when you say it, you need to say, God loves me. That's the truth. Number two, Jesus died to save us, which means Jesus died to save you, which means Jesus died to save me. Put it that way, Jesus died to save me. So God loves me, Jesus died to save me. Number three, I am forgiven, loved, and adopted by God. I am forgiven, loved, and adopted by God. Yeah, look, to as many as received Jesus, even to those who believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. It, what a beautiful statement. Number four, heaven is my destiny and nothing can change that. See, heaven is my destiny and nothing can change that. Now you go, okay, that's, those are four truths, right? I know all that stuff. I've heard all that stuff. Right, but do you remind yourself every day of those truths? See, if you want to live in the joy of Christ, then you have to tell yourself the truth so that truth is flowing through your soul and so that you're aware 
of the truth and the truth is making a difference in your life. Because if you don't tell yourself the truth, you're gonna forget the truth. And in those moments of destruction and despair and sorrow and frustration and anger, they're going to win and rob your joy. But if we have the perspective of heaven, if we have a different kind of attitude because where our life is built on the truth and not on our feelings in the moment, we can live differently. When we live aware of the gospel truth, it changes our attitude, it alters our mindset, and we really can rejoice always like scripture challenges us. So that leads us to the question, how do we celebrate when we're broken? How do we celebrate when we're broken? I mean, because we live in a world that is broken by sin. And we inhabit bodies that are broken by sin. I mean, by the way, that's why we're dying. In case you guys didn't know that, because your body is sinful, it is dying. That's why we have diseases. That's why we have birth defects. That's why nature conspires against us in the natural disasters. Uh, and, and, and so it's broken. And we have relationships that are damaged by sin resulting in abuse, betrayal, adultery, abandonment. So how can we really celebrate while living in this world that is filled with hatred, violence, despair, and destruction? Especially when so many people have anxiety and experience depression or grieving or dealing with trauma. I mean, how do we do this? I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about a core value of contagious celebration, about rejoicing always, about telling yourself the truth. How do we do that in the midst of this brokenness when there's pain all around us? And by the way, it is not just around us, it's here in our midst. Do you know that 19% of adults, that's about one in five, and 31% of teens, almost one in three, experience anxiety disorders at any given moment? One in five adults, one in three teenagers are experiencing anxiety as I speak. And, and, and that's just part of their life. Depression, let's talk about that. Almost 10% of us experience major depressive episodes annually. That's one in 10. From the year 2000 to the year 2020, 800,000 people in the U.S. died by suicide. In 2022, the last year there were statistics, over 49,000 committed suicide, 1.6 million attempted suicide. By the way, if you're here and you're thinking about suicide, can you please not do that and allow us to help you find hope again? See, the struggle is real and the damage of sin is tangible. And if you struggle with anxiety, depression, grief, or trauma, then I really want you to hear this next statement. Depression, anxiety, and grief do not make you a failure as a Christian. Depression, anxiety, and grief do not make you a failure as a Christian. In fact, you're in great biblical company if you struggle with any of those. I mean, Moses <laughs> despaired to the point of death. He was like, God, why don't you just kill me because I don't want to lead these people. David, if you read the Psalms, was crying out to God in despair and anxiety and depression. Elijah, after his great victory, ran off and cried like a baby. You had Gideon, who was one of the most anxious people that you know in the Bible. He kept going back to God. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> really, God? Are you sure? I need to know. Job, you know, said I'd been better off if I'd been born dead. And, and there's so many others. The prophet Jeremiah uh, his, his world was filled with grief as he watched the destruction of Jerusalem, the death of so many people. And he wrote a book that's in the Bible. And do you know what it's called? Lamentations. Lamentations. Do you think that, that God is against us struggling with our, our feelings of, of despair or depression or grief if there's a book in the Bible called Lamentations? It's part of life and he wrote about it. So, I just want you to know, if you're struggling with any of those things, uh, and, I, and I've heard church people say, I'm sorry, if you've said these, just don't say them in my presence, because I've heard them say things that are really, really insensitive and not bright, okay? I've heard them say, well, you just need to pray it away. You just need to pray it away. You just need to read the Bible more, and that'll, that'll take care of your anxiety or depression. If you're grieving, they just go, oh, you just need to get over it. Your loved one's in heaven. 
If I hear someone like that, I may get violent. I've heard people say, well, you just need to claim joy. You see, I've heard all of these and others in church life that show that a lot of people actually think that if you feel depressed, if you feel anxious, if you're grieving too long, whatever that is, that you're not really a good Christian and they question your faith. I just want you to know that's not the case here. That's not the case in the Bible. I just want you to know there is hope and there is help. So um, take your meds and remind yourself of the gospel every single day, the truths that we just talked about. See a counselor and pray and read your Bible and attend worship, okay? Go to a support group and go to a life group. You see, it's not either or, it's both and. It's, it's what the medical community offers and the counseling community offers and what the, your spiritual life calls you to. Look, sin causes all of us to struggle, all of us to suffer, all of us to hurt, and God has promised us a future full of hope. And, and so I want you to know that enduring with hope is a powerful testimony of faith. Okay, enduring with hope is a powerful testimony of faith. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, Paul says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Okay, now the only reason that Paul wrote that is because people were weary of doing good. And they felt like quitting. You ever been so tired you just want to give up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of us that, that, that that's been part of the narrative. And, and we feel guilty because we feel that way. And yet Paul is writing to you and to me and to all of us when he says, hey, don't grow weary in doing good. It, it, the, the harvest is coming. Just don't quit. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. Um, and that's important for us to hear because there's a lot of people who want to give up. But don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on the church. I know a lot of people do. Don't give up on God. Hold on to the promises of Jesus and people will see your faith and they'll be drawn to Jesus. Now I know we talked about being filled with joy of Jesus, but I'm telling you, if you hold on to Jesus in the worst of times, then people are gonna see your faith and that's gonna influence them for Jesus. And, and we're seeing that being lived out before our eyes in the Magdaleno family right now. Now, if you don't know the Magdalena family, if you don't know the story, but about 10 months ago, Pastor Reuben, his wife Joanna, their sons Jacob and Jaden, and their daughter-in-law Lexi suffered the tragic death of Reuben Jr. Everybody just called him Jr. He was 20 years old, he was newly married, he was active duty, Air Force, and he was committed to following Jesus. And he was taken in a moment. Um, and I'm just gonna tell you that the family is still grieving and the truth is, they'll be grieving for the rest of their lives. They're not gonna get over it. It's not something you get over. If you love someone, that love continues and you grieve their absence. And yes, they know they're gonna see him again one day in heaven, but until then, they still have to live in this broken world uh, for the rest of their lives. And look, they are broken and they face doubts and they got angry and they encountered new anxieties and they struggle with depression. And all of that is to be expected. But they endure with hope. They're enduring with hope. They're serving, they're praying, they're blessing, they're preaching, they're counseling. Uh, they're enduring through tears and heartache and grief. And they aren't gonna get over it and put on a happy face. Okay? That's dishonest. And and we're gonna live transparently with integrity and with hope, even at the worst moments. Okay, why? Because the truths of the gospel are still real. God still loves you. He sent Jesus to die for you. You know, you are forgiven and loved and adopted by God, and heaven is your future destiny, and nothing can change that. That's reality. And see, they endure with hope because they know the joy of Jesus is real and they know the gospel is true even in those moments they don't feel it. Let me just say that again. They endure with hope because they know the joy of Jesus is real and the gospel is true even in the moments, maybe especially in the moments they don't feel it. 
So I just have to ask, do you know, do you know the joy of Jesus is real? Do you know that the gospel is true? Because Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. You know, we believe that Jesus gives us a joy-filled life that's going to draw other people to Jesus, which means we got to choose joy. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for the truth of the gospel that has changed our lives and given us hope. Lord, right now I pray for um, those that do not know you as Savior and Lord and have no hope and, and don't know what joy looks like. They hear about it. They want it in their lives. I pray that you would reveal yourself to them if they're in this room or joining us online. Lord, I pray that, uh, that they would just know you, that, that you're real, that you love them, and that you offer them the gift of eternal life. Father, for those that know you and yet struggle with grief or anxiety or depression or, or, or just uh, any other malady, God, remind them that you're with them and, and just encourage them not to quit so that they can see your power, so they can see your redemption. But God, just be with them in those moments they don't feel your presence or, or can sense your love at all. And Lord, we want to be used by you to make a difference in our communities. So teach us how to live with joy. When we feel like it and when we don't, teach us how to be people who point to Jesus with our lives because we have a different attitude because we know the truth. And the truth is we belong to you and you're never going to let us go. Thank you for that. And we want to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Contagious Celebration is available because of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Happiness is built on circumstances, but joy is built on truth. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. To do so, visit youtube.com forward slash Calvary LHC and hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified when we post new content and you'll receive our Your Word for the Day daily devotionals. You can also sign up on our homepage at calvaryaz.com. Well, that's all for today. Please join us again next week. Bye-bye. Are you looking for a way to dive deeper into scripture and make it a part of your daily routine? Check out Calvary's Word for the Day daily devotional videos. Visit calvaryaz.com forward slash D-E-V-O and sign up to receive these three to five minute devotionals right to your inbox each day. Our team of pastors and leaders share meaningful insights from the Bible to equip and encourage you in your faith journey. Don't miss out on this opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and connect with the community of believers. Sign up today and start receiving your daily dose of scripture.